Man, it is wild when you get three different things that you've never heard of and one thing you've never tried. Well, I've never heard of any of these, so yeah. it was all great to me. Expanding your horizons. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And today we are doing a blind tasting. We got a flight right here in front of us. Can't wait. It's going to be a ton of fun. Usually we do head to heads. We're going to do a head to head to head to head today. And this is uh -huh. thanks to Blind Barrels. We are big Blind Barrels fans. Yep. They are awesome. I mean, look at this packaging right here. Like it is unreal, amazing packaging. We like this because we like whiskey experiences. Getting bottles is fun, but having experiences yeah. is also fun. So what is Blind Barrels? So it's a blind tasting kit. As you can see right here, we've got four samples. Is it a subscription service? It is a subscription service, yeah. There we go. <laughs> it is a blind tasting yeah. kit subscription service. Yes, and you get products four times a year. Yep. If you subscribe to it, you can use our code down there below. It's in the video description. And right here, you get an awesome tasting chart that can help you grow your palate. It makes for a fun experience. There's enough in there for you and a significant other to have a really good time with it. Yep. Or you could easily split it three ways if you wanted to get a couple of friends involved. But yeah, I mean, they got one of the best tasting tables in the game. Yeah. This thing is for real legit if you want to expand your palate. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, everything has a theme to it. So this flight says, hey, blind barrelers. We hope you all have a wonderful summer, which by the way, this you is- had a wonderful summer. Yeah, this is the September one. If you sign up right now, you'll be getting the one that's coming out here in December. So awesome stuff. Everyone we've had has been a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. So this says, this box is called the Untouchables for reasons you'll soon see and taste. In this box, we have a truly authentic recipe handed down from a prohibition era female distiller. Oh. Whiskey that isn't aged in rickhouses, warehouses, or even on land at all. A brand that was launched with the help of a domesticated badger, maybe a honey badger, maybe you don't care. And then whiskey from a distillery that was recommended by one of our subscribers. Oh, wow. A first. So that's cool. very cool. A uh, little bit more on Blind Barrels. What they do is they get craft whiskey, but craft whiskey is tricky because you don't know if it's going to be good or not. Mm -hmm. With Blind Barrels, they're vetting what they're putting in the flights. So you get an opportunity for usually less than the price of a single craft whiskey bottle. You get to try four different variations. Which is cool. Which is really cool. And you can click the QR code that's on the tasting table. When you're done with the flight, it will take you directly to their website where they have all the information about yeah. each bottle and you can even purchase it directly. And one of the coolest things is they have over there barrel picks and barrel picks may be in this that they get exclusively. So you're able to get stuff that you would get at distilleries that you really probably won't visit, Yeah. but you can get it here for as little as or less than the cost if you bought it at the distillery for a bottle and you get some barrel picks in the mix as yeah. well. We're going to taste through this and we're just going to be real casual today. We're going to have fun with it. Yeah. Just okay. see what we think about them. I'll probably rank them. Erin will probably tell you whether she thinks she Maybe. likes them or not. I might rank them. But yeah. We'll let's see. get first one on the nose. Oh, that smells amazing right off the bat. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm not getting a ton, but that's probably me because I'm a little stuffy today. Yeah. It's just gobs of caramel sweetness to me. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. It smells warm. Yeah. Like if smell was a temperature, it would be warm. I could see enjoying this. I mean, we're coming up into December. This is the September box we're doing now. But coming into December, a bottle of this would be nice to yeah, sit. We are in December. Yeah. It would be nice to sit by, you know, like a fire, mm. sipping on this, smelling on this. Let's get this on the palate. It smells great. Just mm -hmm. gobs of caramel. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's like a fruity undertone, but it's very soft and I like it. Yeah. It's not overpowering. It's there. But it's not like, oh, this is so fruity. It's very nice. Yeah, what I've surprised me about this one is it's soft on the front end, and then it ramps up into this kind of peppery spice, like mm -hmm. a rice spice. It tastes like a bourbon to me, but it hits with this like rice spice mid palate to back. And then and there's like a blooms. soft kind of fruitiness. And I don't know what fruit, but it's just like a soft sweetness. Yeah, I can almost go peach on this. Oh. Even smelling it, I could get a little bit of a peachy vibe, like a... You know, my head went towards like a Chick-fil-A peach milkshake. Mm, Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Calm down over there. I want some Chick-fil-A right now. Let's get another sip. Spicy chicken sandwich. That's her love language. Spicy chicken sandwich is my love language from Chick-fil-A. I'm getting more oak on the second sip, 
which is kind of tampering out some of the sweetness, but it's still really good. It's very balanced. Yeah, I'm getting a little oak and grain on the second sip that wasn't quite there on the first sip. Mm -hmm. It's coming through more with like just a dry wood. Like it kind of puts you in that mindset of drinking this by the fireside in a log cabin. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I could kind of feel that on the that, first one. For sure. I do like the first one quite a bit. Yeah. These other ones are going to have their work cut out for yeah, them we to be better off, than that. started off strong, so I can yeah. only imagine it's going to get better, right? Yeah. Two on the nose. Oh, it's getting better. <laughs> It's getting better. Am I a fortune teller or what? You are. You can see the future. I can see the future. Are you clairvoyant? I don't know. Is that what the word is? I think that's where you see dead people, right? I don't know. I thought it meant you could see the future. I don't know. Let us know. Comments below. Yeah, this to me, I don't... Are you getting anything specific? I'm getting a little more graininess on this one. Not bad, not a ton, but a little bit more on the nose, but the palette might change that. Yeah, I've got... I've got a little bit of like a, a field, like a wheat field or something. Okay. But what I'm getting off of this is a lot of sweetness. It's a little bit more sugary sweet than the first oh, glass. Interesting. Okay. First glass was a little bit more like gobs of caramel. This is more in in my How mind. How is caramel not sugary sweet? Because isn't caramel caramelized sugar? It is, but I'm saying this is leaning a little bit more towards like the candy vein. Okay. Like a hard candy. Gotcha. Almost like a little bit of like. The yellow runt and the pink runt. Did you tell me the pink runt's been discontinued? Um, yes, I think. Can you let us know? Or the red below? one. One, either the pink or red. This is like the the yellow and the pink together. It smells really good. Interesting. All right, let's get on the palette. This is like a soft earthiness. Yeah, it. I was expecting I like that. that fruity sweet, sugary sweetness on mm, the palette. Not getting that. And it goes way darker. It still is sweet. It's got that underlying note now on the finish that I got on the nose. Okay. All that's there on the finish, but it hits with a nice, dark profile up I, front. I find this to be very balanced and smooth. And what I mean when I say smooth is there are no sharp edges, which yeah. is, I think, the definition of smooth. It seems to be well-crafted. Yeah. And knowing that this is craft whiskey, that's pretty remarkable mm -hmm. for this to be sure. this well-rounded. This yeah. is a really nice pour, actually. I, I do like this better than glass one. I think this might be a little proofier than maybe it lets on to. Think so? Maybe. All right, let's get another sip. Man, that's just good whiskey. Do they have rods like in that. here? Or are these all bourbons? I don't know. Oh. We don't know. We're double blind, which is okay. our favorite way to taste yeah. whiskey. If you watch the channel at all, you know that. So to have a company that can send you stuff completely double blind that you don't know for yeah. less than the cost of one bottle, that's pretty awesome. I would I would wager that there's high rye in this. You could tell me that this is a legacy distillery and I would believe you. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't There's a little bit of graininess that you can get from craft distilleries, but it's yeah. very subtle. Very subtle. Very subtle. I yeah. like that a lot. All right, class three on the nose. They're so far getting better. Oh, I want to hear what you wow. say. I want to hear what you say about this. Wow. This was this was called the Untouchables. Maybe for good reason. Like, these are all good so far. <laughs> I will say, having done several blind barrel boxes now, this is the best lineup we've had yet. Yeah. In my opinion, um, for my palate. So, for me, this is caramel. It's like Christmas caramel. Yeah. It smells like Christmas that or caramel that you have only at Christmas time. But I don't know what that means. But there's also somebody like... Uh, what is it like a fruit reduction where they're cooking fruit in the pan on the stove yeah. with sugar over there mm -hmm. in the room? So you're kind of getting wafts of that with the caramel. This smells like, you know, have you ever walked oh. by a place that is making fresh waffle cones for ice cream? Yeah. That's kind of what this reminds yeah. me of. What about, um, you know, those caramel candies that have the white? They're really, really soft, and they have that white, fluffy stuff on the inside. No, I don't. I don't eat much caramel. You don't know? I don't eat caramel. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. That's what this smells like. Like a caramel cream? Yeah. Man, it smells so good. They're getting better. Let's, Let's get it on the palate. It. Wow, the flavor translates. Or the, yeah, it translates. What was on the nose translated to the palate for me. Wow, I got like a little... Um, this tastes like candy, like good good caramel candy. I wonder if this is finished or not, because on the back end, I'm getting like a real fruity sweet, almost like a, I want to say perfumey, and I feel like that might be a bad note for some people. Because not, it's not floral. Y yeah, it's more perfumey. It, I do feel like it could be off-putting to some people. I do enjoy it in this, mm -hmm. but it is way more of a mood pour for me than the first two. Yeah. Like these first two I could drink anytime. This one... 
I mean, the right mood for this sort of experience. Yeah, I'm, and honestly, going back to it after the second, after the sip, I'm getting more vanilla on the nose. Yeah, and I'm getting that perfuminess on the nose now too. Whatever that is on the palate, now that I've identified it on the palate, yeah. I'm getting it on the nose too. Let's take another sip though, because I do like this. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting visions of a vanilla cream filled donut. I can see you there. Yeah. Not like a Boston cream filled donut, not a custard cream filled donut, but like a vanilla cream filled donut. What other things do they fill donuts with? Jelly, chocolate. Keep them coming. I think, I mean, Boston cream. All right. You've exhausted What, what else list. did I say? I don't know. Custard, I just, I just put you on vanilla the, cream. I put you on the spot There's to see all, how many you all, could come up all with. All kinds, types of jelly, types. Types of jelly. All kinds and types of jelly. All right. Let's get uh, on the glass four. I love a good jelly filled donut. Let's keep it moving. Okay, let's do it. Okay, this is interesting. So this isn't quite as fragrant as the first three yeah, on the nose. Yeah, I was wondering if my nose was broken, but... But it smells really balanced on the nose. You're getting way in there. I can't smell it. <laughs> Are you broken? I might be broke. All right. This, to me, smells really well balanced. Again, does not smell... Crafty, which is a testament to Blind Barrel's barrel selection. When I say crafty, I mean like grainy, like standing in a grain silo or musty so grains. I do have to be like full disclosure. I can get hints of craftiness, as Josh was saying, on these. Yeah. But they're very subtle. It's subtle, yeah. Very slight and not off-putting. So I would I would happily drink any of these. And I can be really weird when it comes to craftiness. So these are all, they all pass in my book yeah and i'm also very sensitive to that crafty note and it, it is kind of off-putting to me when i get that really grainy type of vibe to mm -hmm. something and these are laced in in a way that it's unique and it makes them interesting to sip. i think it actually elevates the pour yeah. as opposed to takes away from the pour the, right. the grain that we are getting in in it exactly let's get this on the palate okay i'm struggling for words here Man, this is a more of an experience glass and a flavor glass. Like it this is, is very subtle in nose and flavor. Yeah, super balanced. It's got a lot of gravitas on the palate. Like it saturates the back side of the palate, like the back half of my palate. Really? Yeah, it's like soaking into my tongue. Okay. Feels like it's it's like seeping into my jowls. Like it's it's getting in there. This, I mean, talk about smooth. I feel like this is a very smooth drinking pour as far as no sharp edges. Yeah. Um, it almost might be too smooth. It might, for me, it's not bad though. But also, we were just coming off of some pretty flavorful pours. So, yeah. yeah. We may need to go one more time backwards, like off camera. Yeah. To, to give this its fair due. Yeah. Anytime you're doing a blind flight, it's always good to run through it one way, clear your palate, go back through the other way, see if that changes how you feel about things. Yeah. Whether you're ranking them or not, you owe it to yourself to go back through the other way, see if that changes anything for you. Yeah. All right, one more sip on four. Okay, the second sip is coming through with more flavor as I'm getting acclimated to it. Mm, yeah. And it's just, it actually just tastes like good bourbon. Really good bourbon, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It tastes like really good Nothing bourbon. Nothing like crazy is standing out. It just tastes like really well-made bourbon. Yeah. Well, what's standing out to me is that back of palate saturation. Like mm -hmm. not a lot of things do that. Mm -hmm. You got to get into like a, a tier above to have that experience yeah. be happening. The finish lasts forever on glass four. This is going to be tough. We are going to take some time, go back through these off camera, do our due diligence, let you know what we think about them. Maybe pick a favorite or two, something like that. We may not rank the whole thing or Aaron may not. Yeah, but I don't know. I've got it's my tough. rankings already. I believe I just need to uh -huh. verify. We'll be right back. All right. Did that time help? It did. Good. Where are you at? Okay. So my ranking if you will is more of somewhat of a categorization mm -hmm. so my least favorite okay let's start they're all good i like them all which is why i have to categorize them as opposed to rank them because i like them all my least favorite of the bunch is probably glass two interesting it was a little bit more it was the most crafty tasting of the bunch however it still was very good i would agree with that then for me glasses one and three were good but i would call them mood pours okay they wouldn't be glasses i would want to drink all the time or consistently i would need to be in the mood for them so this is more of like a fruity one kind of peachy this is more of like a vanilla cream at christmas glass okay so the one that i would drink probably the most consistently would be the fourth glass it just tastes like good solid bourbon it's not too 
punchy. It's very smooth. It would be an easy sipper, which I think is a good thing. The end. Yeah. Cool. I mean, for me, class three is going to be last place, not because it's bad. It's just very specific in what it is. Mm -hmm. And I would reach for it less than the other ones. Yeah. Kind of to your point on yeah. glass two. Uh, glass one is going to be third place for me. Very good. These top three are very close in my book. Mm -hmm. I am awarding points to glass two and making it second because I thought it was right. a little bit more unique than glass one. And I really enjoyed just the overall experience of okay. glass two it had a little bit more complexity to the flavor profile mm -hmm. for me. Glass four, both of our favorites. Oh, wow. Those are your favorite too. It's just really, really, really well yeah. done whiskey. Which I liked it coming off of these three, but it just seemed so faint. But then when we took time to go backwards, yeah. that's when this one really had a chance to shine because it wasn't being compared instantly to some very flavorful pours, even though these weren't the flavors I wanted. They were flavorful. So that kind of gave this one a disadvantage. So I like that we, we went backwards as well. Right. So to show you guys, I just scanned the QR code right here on the tasting table. Mm. It brings you up to the Blind Barrels website where they have everything mm. on here. We don't know if it's going to focus. <laughs> okay. Hopefully it did focus. We'll see. But yeah, the uh, you just click to reveal the samples. And then okay. when you reveal the samples, it tells you what's what. So, so should we start with... Let's just go down the line since glass four was our favorite. Okay, that so works. sample A, which was my third place. And it kind of in your it middle of the pack. It was in the middle of the pack for me. Wow. So this is... I've never even heard of this. Which This is really cool when you do stuff like Blind Barrels. You get things you've never even heard of. You are exposed to things yeah. that you may never, ever have a chance to be exposed to. So this is a straight bourbon whiskey out of Washington State. Oh, hey. From a distillery called Chambers Bay. Okay. When you've been in the whiskey game like we have, it is interesting when you run across things you've never yeah. heard of. So it says this whiskey isn't aged on land, but in boathouses on a dock, giving each barrel a distinct character shaped by the sea. 95 oh. proof, four years old. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, That's just cool. a really, really good. And there's tasting notes here, aroma notes. You can use that stuff to refine your palate. Mm. You know, if you want to sharpen your palate up yeah. a little bit, or if you just want to taste for enjoyment. Cool. And they tell why they picked it, what they think about it at, over at Blind Barrels. All right, moving on to sample B, mm -hmm. which was my second place. And your last it place. It was my last place because it was the most craft tasting of the bunch. That's which fair. That actually made it really nice for you. So yeah. it just depends on what you I want. I really enjoyed this. So this is out of Illinois. This is a bottle and bond bourbon, 100 okay. proof, Whiskey Acres Distilling, straight bourbon whiskey. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Five years old, 75% corn, 15% winter wheat. It's a weeder. It's a weeder. 10% malted barley. Aaron put a weeder last. What a shocker. That checks out. Wow, okay. So now we're two for two in whiskeys we've never heard of. Yeah. That's incredible. Way to go blind barrels. Yeah. That's super fun. Yeah, these are all really good too. So we might have to expand our palate yeah. a bit more. And again, you can just click the thing and buy it right there if you want to. So sample C, which was the one that I felt was a little perfumey. Or you did too. I liked agreed. it. I thought my synopsis of this is vanilla cream Christmas. It's a rye. That's why it's that's why it's like that. Yeah. That's why it's like that. Okay. So this is uh, an Iowa rye, an Iowan, I Iowan. Don't look at me. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, everybody from Iowa. Tell me what you are in the comments <laughs> below. This is a true Prohibition era rye crafted in old school bootleg still from an authentic recipe handed down from a female distiller who was who made what was Al Capone's favorite pour. Wow. 105 proof gold label rye. Mm. And they've got all their tasting notes, maple donut, Werther's original, deep I mint. said vanilla cream donut, Time. did I not? I think you did. I think this was our donut Because that was the whole Boston cream jelly filled donut situation. All right. And now let's reveal our favorite of the bunch. Let's do it. And this is, I have heard of this distillery. This is Mythology. I've never heard of it. I've that. passed over their bottles in stores and now I've actually gotten to try one. That's mm. cool. So this is Mythology uh, Distilling out okay. of Colorado. Okay. And yeah, best friend, cast strength bourbon, 118 proof. Shocker, we picked the, you know, the highest proof one. Whoa, this is the highest proof? Yep. It, it drinks so balanced. It does not feel high proof at all yeah. in a good way. Like it is... Wow. So this is a blend of 15-year Kentucky bourbon with three-year Indiana wow. and five-year Indiana bourbon. 
So there's a lot of blending going on here. This is really well blended. It's blended very they well. They do a fantastic job on this. Yeah. It, it, Way it to go, mythology. It was blended so well that I called it almost too smooth. <laughs> yeah. Way to go, mythology, on the blending. Way to go, blind barrels, on picking that one. Again, yeah. these are super fun. You know, we like to do sort of stuff like this. I mean, we've done, like, all kinds of subscription boxes for fun date nights. We like to do this stuff with friends. So yeah. blind barrels really fits that niche in our life. And if you like it, again, we got a link in the video description below so that you can get in on yeah. blind barrels, have a ton of fun with your loved ones, friends, significant others, all that good stuff. So, or just yourself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's pl it's plenty. You could do this twice yeah. with, with what you get. And that could be cool. Run it twice, see if you get the same results mm, both times. There you go. Yeah. Cool. All right. If you like this video, like it, subscribe to the channel if you like this style of content. We do blind tastings over here all the time. It's what we do. It's our bread and butter, as some would say. I love bread and butter and sugar sandwich. Have y'all ever had that? I can't bring up bread and butter around her without her Jones and for some warm carbs. <laughs> yeah. Hit the bell down there. Join us for a live stream. It's a ton of fun. That's it for today. Yeah. Thanks, Blind Barrels. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Be good to each other. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.